And fantastic. Well, greetings, everybody. My name is Jake Levy. I'm with Claris Healthcare, and I'm super excited about our meeting today. I want to thank you for your time, and also want to thank you for the incredible work that you guys do for the senior communities that you serve. Um, it's my pleasure to um, act as the facilitator and co-presenter with um, my partner, Cindy Fink. And I'll introduce Cindy first. Um, Cindy, who I'm proud to say is an incredible contributor uh, to Claris. As, as a customer, we've learned a lot from Cindy. She's very passionate about the kind of um, work that she does with Meals on Wheels of Rowan. Cindy's worked in the nonprofit and senior services fields for 41 years as both staff and volunteer. She serves as the executive director of Meals on Wheels Rowan in North Carolina. She's been an incredible ambassador for um, Claris Companion throughout the Carolinas and beyond, and I really appreciate that, Cindy. Her experiences include operations, policy making, fund development, and marketing and organizations with budgets ranging from 200000 to over $10 million. Cindy's goal is achieving purposeful growth while developing a sustainable, or sustainable organization that can meet varied nutrition and socialization needs in the senior community. Cindy is a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, go sky blue, and she holds an MBA with a concentration in marketing from the Bryan School of Business at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. So thank you very much for joining Cindy. Um, I'm Jake Levy. I am the Chief Revenue Officer with Claris Healthcare. Uh, I've worked with Claris for about four years now. Um, I've been immersed in health technology pretty much my entire career, about 28 years now. Um, much of that time has been spent in um, home care and hospice and in senior care. I proudly served on the board of the National Association of Home Care for two terms, um, was a former national uh, or, or chairman of the National Association of Home Care's Technology Association, and um, essentially have been involved in aging in place for quite some time. The last 12 years or so, um, I've been almost entirely focused on uh, areas of telehealth and remote monitoring. So that has been my experience. The agenda today is pretty straightforward. Um, we are going to first talk a little bit about the impact of senior social isolation. I, I think we all know its impact historically. I've asked Cindy to um, make some comments and kind of update us in the context of COVID. Um, Cindy is going to walk us through her program. We really wanted this to be a hands-on session, almost a how-to guide on how to apply technology and alleviate as much as possible uh, senior social isolation. So we've asked um, Cindy to come in, talk a little bit about the inception of her program, some of the challenges and obstacles that she was able to overcome, uh, different ways that they approach deployment, and probably most importantly is the incredible results that she's had up to this point. Um, I'll spend a few minutes talking about Claris Companion. I'd like to do a brief overview just so you can kind of see this from a senior's perspective and how it's actually used. Uh, I'll make a few comments on some other success stories. I know we have an audience that um, has a varied background and um, I'd like to uh, address that as well. And then we're gonna leave uh, 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. Um, those of you that wanna stick around for a longer period of Q&A, um, Cindy has been gracious enough to offer to do that as well. With that said, I'd like to invite Cindy to take over the presentation. Um, Cindy, I'm happy to advance your slides for you, and you can share your screen when it's appropriate. Thanks. Thank you, Jake. I'm excited to be here with you guys and share with you a little bit about our program and uh, leave open space so you can envision what your program might look like with the Claire's Companion tablet. Here at Meals on Wheels, we're a fairly small Meals on Wheels agency. 
uh, we're only providing about 240 participants per day with home delivered meals, but our area is quite large, 544 square miles for our county. We are both suburban and rural to very rural in our county. Uh, during 2020, we added a grocery program and that made a huge difference, a big impact for those that were suffering from some of the effects of COVID and staying home and quarantining. We have three full-time and eight part-time staff. And in 2020, we provided 107,170 meals, which was 50,000 more meals in one year than in our 45 year history. So COVID did push us to much greater heights. And it was also COVID that um, sent us looking for a resource because our comfort callers were finding that many of our folks were very, very lonely. Jake, if you'll advance the slide. Thanks. Um, when we look at social isolation, the absence of social interactions, and you can get lots of definitions from very short to long, to seem to be kind of in between, because I like the fact that it specifically mentions social interactions with contact and contacts and relationships with family, friends, neighbors on individual level and with society at large. And when we think about the causes, not only was it COVID, but you think about the societal changes that we've seen, families are spread across the country and the world. Uh, they don't live next door. Your, your elderly mom and dad don't necessarily live with you. In some cases they do, but in lots of cases they don't. We've also seen physical, mental, and medical issues that are causing this isolation. Folks are, have lost mobility. They don't get as around as well. They don't communicate as clearly as they did. They can't hear as well. They can't see as well. So all those things cause this uh, kind of burrowing in and staying at home, uh, this social isolation that we've seen that lots and lots of seniors are experiencing. The other part is the impact on the individual from social isolation, the loneliness that folks talk about. They might be depressed, whether they want to use that word or not, depending on their age. Some folks are, are hesitant to use the word depressed or feeling uh, effects of depression. Medical, mental and physical health issues that come from staying at home all the time not moving around, not keeping those muscles going and, and walking around in the grocery store, things like that. We see more frequent doctor visits. People stay at home, especially in the summer, they don't feel like they're sweating. They don't feel the heat of the summer, but they are getting dehydrated. So they, they're socially isolated, they're physically isolated, they're not hydrating and they get UTIs, oftentimes, chronic UTIs, so more frequent doctor visits that come from the effects of social isolation. Changes in condition going unnoticed. When you communicate with family or friends on an infrequent basis, then they don't notice any changes in your condition, especially if you're doing a, a, a video conference or just on the phone, they don't see that cut on your leg where you tripped and fell uh, walking out to get the paper. So there are a lot of things that go unnoticed that change in condition. And also we have to talk about dementia because folks with early dementia in the early phases, they can socialize in the, with just the beginning uh, com conversations very easily. It's kind of rote. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. How do you like this hot weather? Oh, I don't like the hot weather. They can get by with that, but when you get into deeper conversations or questions, then you find out that they are having some issues with dementia. So that change in condition is going unnoticed, and that's due to the lack of interaction with people who know you and know you fairly well on a daily or a weekly basis. Okay, Jake, thanks. So what brought about our search for a tool to combat social isolation was during COVID, we used comfort callers. Our volunteers who weren't out delivering because of COVID, we backed off to one delivery a week of frozen meals. So we utilized our volunteers to be comfort callers and to call folks, oftentimes the ones that were on a route that they had delivered to. 
So we said, what are our comfort callers hearing? And they would call in to report our folk, this individual is so lonely or Sally just wants to talk and talk and talk. And I want to talk to her next time I'll call her at the end of my calls. But we just were getting that over and over and over again, that folks were lonely. They didn't have anyone to talk to. We had one individual who actually said to his comfort caller, I'm depressed. And we got in touch. He was a VA patient. We got in touch with his case manager and passed along that information. Because when somebody's willing to tell you that, then you know there's an issue. So we started looking for a tool. And we compared um, the various tablet tools that are out there. And we came up with the decision to use the Claire's Companion tablet. And we call Claire's Companion Tablet Charlie. The reason we call it Charlie is because a lot of our folks were had no experience, zero experience with technology of any kind. And actually, they were averse to technology. So we didn't want to call it a tablet, a smartphone, a computer. We wanted it to be their friend. So we call it Charlie. And we talk about Charlie being your friend. And if somebody calls you on the phone and you're tired of talking to them, you just tell them, I'm sorry, I got to go because Charlie's calling me or Charlie's here. If somebody's at the door and you don't want to answer the door, say, I'm sorry, I have company. Charlie's here. However you want to use Charlie, but we want Charlie to be your friend. When we talk about who it will serve, we know that the candidates for using Charlie are in a target market. And it's going to vary by whether or not you serve active seniors or homebound seniors. We did find early on that the individuals who are not candidates are those who are really um, already involved in technology. If they have a tablet, a smartphone, or a smartphone and a computer, then Charlie is probably not going to work for them unless you go to the lengths of downloading the software to their tablet. And we can talk about that later what the options are. But the other end is if it's somebody with a very advanced dementia and you're still trying to keep them at home by delivering meals or having caregivers come in, it probably is not going to work for them with advanced dementia because they will forget to even touch the screen. So there are some extremes at either end of the spectrum. Now we have 84 year olds and 90 year olds that use Charlie that have never been exposed to technology before. And that's one of the reasons why we call it Charlie. We don't want them to get some preconceived notion that they can't do it. And if you say, well, I want to give you a, a Samsung tablet or something like that, that might start them off right away, backing, it, backing them into a corner. So we call it Charlie. And we started out with a very small pilot of 15. And then we got some additional funding. We're going to add 25. But we needed to be able to say to funders what kind of outcomes we were looking for in using this technology. Number one, we were looking to combat social isolation. And number two, depression. So those are the first outcomes we're looking for. Secondly, we want to encourage interaction with family members, with caregivers, with neighbors, with whoever the individual wants to communicate with. So we, we decided we needed a way to figure out what a baseline was going to be. So we started using a um, Lubin's social network survey and also a senior depression survey. I don't often tell the participant what the subject survey is or the name of it. I just tell them, I've got two surveys I'd like to do with you. One's a short six questions. One's a little bit longer. All I need you to do is for the first one is answer yes or no. The first thing that comes out of, in your mind, don't give me the maybes, just the first thing that comes into your mind. And that way we measure where they are on the depression scale. And the second survey talks about how many people they're interacting with in certain situations. That's where we get the social isolation data. The other part is we have to identify the other metrics that we want to use. What are we looking for in terms of the numbers of interactions with individuals, with um, the outside world, whether that be websites, 
or um, library, the library or their faith home. We, we have to identify what kind of metrics we want to use. And I think that Claire's is doing a fabulous job of helping us with that. And you'll hear more about that in a little bit. One of the biggest questions we had originally was how are we going to introduce Charlie to participants? How are we going to get them to want to use this? One of the first things we did was we asked for their help. There are not many times that people want to turn you down when you ask for their help and support. Um, we told them, hey, we're doing a pilot project and we'd like your help to see if you could tell us about the use or the way that we can interact and we can have our participants interact with Charlie. The way we went about that was we used our care coordinators, the very same person that signed them up for Meals on Wheels when they were talking to them and doing their evaluation of their eligibility is the individual who reached out to contact them about Charlie. So we wanted to have a warm introduction, if at all possible. We also had a great article that ran in the local newspaper, and we had participants call us and say, hey, I want to do that. I want to do Charlie. Jake? One of the other things I'd like to encourage you all to do is to partner with other agencies if you have the opportunity. We had a real pleasure of partnering with a group in another part of our county called Elder Orphan Care. And their main purpose is to interact with individuals who have no one, who have no family or no family nearby, who have nobody to be their caregiver. They, have, they don't have anybody to walk around their home and say, hey, you need a shower grab bar, or what are you doing about all these rugs on your floor? And they will do that for these individuals. So we partner with them. We provide the meals through Meals on Wheels, and we provide the Charlie tablet, and they have occupational therapy assistance students who will take the tablet in, introduce it to the individual, and show them how to use it. On the other hand, we have piloted in another part of the county, the northern end of the county, the prospect of just ordering their tablet, having it customized, we personalize it, it gets delivered to them, and we instruct them to plug it in. And it works both ways. For those who have received the tablet and plugged it in, they have needed very little assistance, if any. We have an 84-year-old who received her tablet, plugged it in, and started using it that day. So we did that, especially during the earlier um, part of COVID, because we were very careful to protect our participants and protect our staff and volunteers. Now, when I say what comes with Charlie, I'm not talking about the the charging cord and that kind of thing, the stylus. I'm really talking about what comes on the tablet. How is it, how is it put together? And I guess the biggest question is what to use first. It comes with so much and you can have it customized. You want it to come with certain amount, certain websites on it. All of our tablets leave the warehouse with our library, our senior center, our Meals on Wheels website, um, the Libby app, which is the uh, in North Carolina statewide reading app that you can download books from any library in the state. Uh, you can download audio, you can da download video as well. So there are so many things that it can come with. You're really, your choice is how do we want to narrow it down so that folks don't get overwhelmed. And we normally start with only three or four, what I call bubbles on the screen to start our folks with. The personalization comes in and what you know about the individual. So when that tablet's leaving the warehouse and it's getting ready to come to our participant, that we take an opportunity of that window to personalize it for the individual. We ask them questions about their routine. When they get up, when they eat breakfast, do they take a nap in the afternoon? Do they go out to get the mail? And a good, um, use of that information is say we have somebody who we know is a fall risk but they insist on going to the end of their gravel driveway to get their mail every day so i set their tablet up their charlie with a question at about 3 30 in the afternoon that says did you get any good mail today yes or no 
I really don't care if they got any good mail. What I care about is they got back in the house after getting that mail and answered the question. That tells me they're okay. They did that transition safely. So there are lots of things you can do. We've had people, we say, what's your faith home? They haven't been able to see any online services the entire year because they didn't have a computer. They had no access, but I can set that up as a website. I can set it up as the YouTube website that's already on that particular faith home and they can click on that and go to see any of the services they want to see. So there are things that you can do that really personalize the, the Charlie tablet for them. I mentioned about routines and concerns. Another thing we have is, is we have folks who we are concerned about them getting up in the morning and making sure they're up so that they can receive their meals, for example. So we'll oftentimes set their wellness survey first thing in the morning when they get up in hopes that they will let us know how they're doing. And if they don't let us know how they're doing, you can set it so it gives you alerts or the family member alerts that they haven't answered their wellness check. For me, that's a key to give them a call and make sure they're doing all right, that they did wake up and they didn't fall in between getting up and having their breakfast and seeing their, their wellness survey. There's also a little check-in button. You can leave it on there and they can just click on it anytime and check in just like you do on Facebook or social media. The other thing we want to do is identify their personal interests. Uh, have one individual who's very interested in the Atlanta Braves, for example. So I set the Atlanta Braves website up to the page where the scores are, so he can go on that website and just check the scores or move around more if he'd like to. We have some folks that are interested in um, knitting. So there are lots of websites out there, Pinterest, for example, that has, they can go and, and look at information about knitting or gardening, things like that. Surveys and events, I use an awful lot. Um, most recently, I use these to ask our participants on Charlie, did they need a fan? We set that information out uh, with our Meals on Wheels deliveries but I could get information back from 18 people right away just by setting it up as a survey. Do you need a fan this summer? Yes or no? And then we can send out those fans. Um, events, I always do a pre-event notice. For example, for the 4th of July coming up, sometime around the last week of June, they'll get an event notice in the afternoon that says 4th of July is coming up. Don't forget to display your American flag. And then on the 4th of July, they will get information. Today's the 4th of July, celebrate. Um, hope that you get a chance to see family and friends. Happy 4th of July from Meals on Wheels. So I use those a lot. And the great thing is because I'm the administrator of everybody, I can do it one time for everyone's tablet. And it comes up on their, on their screen. Another thing is contacts and alerts. It's very important that the contacts the individual wants put in their little white fence are engaged in the process. One of the great things about the Claire's Companion tablet is the security. And so many, so many seniors don't want to be involved in anything with the internet because they've been scammed or they've heard of others that were and they're scared. So we talk about the security of the tablet being like a little white fence around your home. That the only people who come in that fence are the people that you want to come in that fence and you give us their names and we pop them in to your contacts. Also alerts can go to anybody that you'd like to have alerted. I always have the alerts come to at least one of our staff members here and they can go to one or more of your contacts. For example, I don't want an alert if they did not um, answer the question about getting their mail. I usually check that from time to time, but I do want an alert if they don't answer their wellness survey. 
if their wellness survey comes up at 10 in the morning and by noon they haven't answered it, I, I want to make sure they're okay. So I want an alert. And I'm sure there's a family member or care, uh, caregiver or neighbor that would like to know that too. So alerts are very useful. You can set them up to tell you when they answer a question, or you can set them up to tell you only when they don't answer a question, and you can give it a time frame in which to notify you. Jake? One of the things that we want to do, and I mentioned this briefly, encourage the contacts to interact with their, our participants. We want the participant to develop a comfort level, and which they do, then you can add on. Say you've done photos, you've opened that bubble for them, and the contacts, their friends and family are sending them photos. Well, then you might want to say, well, how would you like to have a video call with your family members? And you could add that on. You might want to say, hey, look, you're doing great with this. Would you like to have access to more online exercise videos? And then you can add an option for that. So make sure they're comfortable with what they're using and then add on little by little. One of the things that came up with us recently is I want to make sure that we share data with participants and their contacts as to their use. One of the things that you're going to hear about in a little while is an awesome, awesome tool that will allow us to say to individual participants, your usage in the last month was this many interactions, you received this many photos, you did such and such, and say, add a boy or add a girl, congratulations, and do the same thing with their contacts. Say, your loved one had this much interaction. I think one of the things we have to do is to be congratulatory to our participants and contacts for utilizing Charlie. The other thing is we want to make sure we're doing follow-up surveys because remember our baseline data with regard to depression and social isolation is no good to us unless we have something to compare it to. So we set up ourselves to do for the first year resurvey every three months and I can tell you that the first three months, we've already seen dramatic increases in the amount of interaction with contacts from the social isolation survey, and we've seen a decrease in depression symptoms from the depression survey. So right away, we're getting really good data that tells us Charlie is doing what it's supposed to do. The big question a lot of you have is, where did you get funding, and how are you going to get funding in the future? Our first funding came through the CARES Act, and we got funding. We split our budget for the CARES Act, and we got funding for 15 tablets and one year of service. I did not, quite frankly, want to get an invoice every month for a service from three tablets, then five tablets, then 18 tablets. I just wanted to write the check at one time. So our first um, pilot, our first Charlie tablets came. We ordered them as we brought on folks, but I paid for each tablet and the complete first year of funding. We also received a grant during the year, this in the last six months, for 25 more tablets and one year of service. We think there'll be some possible future funding opportunities through the ARP funds, American Rescue Plan funds. And in the future, one of the things I hope to do is to write some grants that will fund one year of meals and one year of service on the Charlie tablet. I think I'll be able to get some funding to purchase the tablets, but also for those that we currently have going on, we want to be able to add on another year. So in, in my world of Meals on Wheels, Home Delivered Meals, it cost us $22.80 a year to provide meals for one person and adding on $600 for service I just added on what it costs to do the cellular we've got cellular tablets out there we've got Wi-Fi tablets but for the most part we have cellular enabled tablets Jake I'll turn it over to you fantastic that was great Cindy Make sure my mic is on terrific and we're going to open it up for, um, for Q&A in just a few minutes. I wanted to take um, a moment to 
talk a little bit more about some of the specific features and functions of the Claris Companion platform. But before I do that, I want to go back and I want to actually show you guys some results of what um, Mills on Wheels at Rowan and Cindy and her team have been able to accomplish. Uh, this is our analytics dashboard. It's available to all of our customers. Uh, and we actually went in and we did um, a, a view of Cindy's program because we wanted to see what are the results. And I think it really is remarkable to see the good work that they're doing. So total number of interactions, uh, they've had 20, or they have actually active right now, they have 23 seniors that are on the platform today. Um, there have been over 5,600 interactions. And then of course we break that down as to what all the interactions are. So you heard a lot of different features and functions that Meals on Wheels has put um, to practice here. We can actually see how those are being utilized, how much time is spent on the device. So there's been 22,000 plus minutes of interaction on the platform. And then we kind of break that down between websites and playing games. And we can even drill in and we can see the interaction for the specific participants. So Ferris has um, been very responsive for the medication reminders. Uh, Harwood has spent a lot of time on the various websites that Cindy talked about. Um, and I could very easily drill in on a single individual. One of the things that Cindy and I have talked about is being able to share individual data with those caregivers that are interested. And I think one of the challenges that so many of your organizations face with this whole grant process is to be able to show results. And um, I, I just think that Mills and Wills has really set themselves up for future success because they're able to capture the results through our platform. We're able to see that 38% of um, all of the activities, 38% are centered around the wellness survey that Cindy talked about. We can kind of see over a period of time uh, the correlation between minutes and numbers of activities for a certain day. So on May 28th, um, there were uh, five point, I see 46, um, 45 minutes of activity, 50 different activities. We can see what websites are the most popular and who's viewing those websites. So there's just a lot of really great information I'm just super proud of the job that Cindy and her team uh, have done. You can see survey questions. What are the most hey, popular survey questions? Excuse yes. me for interrupting, but I just want to share with you sure. one thing you shared with me yesterday when we were looking at it was the fact that our interactions dropped way down on the weekends. And I thought, yeah. well, that shouldn't be because we really want to keep them interacting throughout the week. And if we're delivering meals during the week, we want to make sure we interact with them on the weekends. Right. So immediately after we talked about that, I went in and set up some events and reminders for the weekends. Some were about hydration, remembering to drink water during the summer. Some were about eating healthy foods that are full of water, cucumbers, <clears throat> melons, etc. But that was just something you shared with me yesterday, and I was able to immediately act upon that. That's fantastic. Love to hear that. Okay, um, let's go back here. Um, as a participant, you will receive a copy of our PowerPoint as well as access to the recording. I wanted to mention that as well. Um, so Claris has been around since 2012. Um, from our inception, we've been focused on providing seniors and families and, and clinicians a common platform to deliver the highest quality of care at home. Uh, we've um, we've been very mindful of senior social isolation from the very beginning, um, and we've, you know, highlighted that in terms of our mission statement. Um, the, you know, our real secret sauce to this platform has really just been simplicity. Uh, make it really, really easy for seniors to engage and interact. Um, make it intuitive. So I'll give you an example. Um, 
an iPad's pretty intuitive for me. I can kind of swipe around and I can kind of figure out what all the different icons are. It's pretty difficult for my 83 year old mom. She just doesn't really understand that whole swiping motion. So as uh, Cindy used the term bubble, we have these large buttons that make it very easy just to touch the screen and then it's gonna respond that way. And then we've designed it um, so that it is actually a lot of fun as well. And so I think that that's really the, the key to our success. Um, Cindy has talked a lot about a number of the different features and functions. And we work with our customers to kind of establish what we call profiles to determine where's the good starting point here. What sort of social engagement features here on the left make sense? And um, in terms of care and wellness, what are we trying to accomplish here? Um, and as Cindy said, we do promote kind of a, a crawl, walk, and run strategy. We don't want to overwhelm seniors with a lot of buttons up front. We want to kind of draw them into the process and actually get them comfortable with that. Um, speaking of which, uh, this is my mom's tablet. Um, she, I talk about drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Uh, when we started with my mother, who was in quarantine in a facility here in Atlanta, Georgia, um, for well over a year, this was really her only way to communicate safely with her family and her loved ones. And you can see how we personalized the tablet. I put three of her favorite people on here. And, you know, for her, the tablet functions not only as a communication tool, but it's an electronic picture frame for her. And if I remember when we started with my mom, we just had these two buttons. We had a video calling button and um, a photos button. So it's really, really simple for seniors. And then on the back end, uh, it's very powerful for caregivers and family members. You can access this information via our portal, or there's an app that you can download from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store on your phone or your tablet. And I think one of the advantages of the entire Claris platform is the ability to remotely control these devices from a single point. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Um, let me just comment quickly on just some other success stories that we've had. Um, we actually work with a couple of different programs in the county of Mecklenburg in North Carolina. Uh, we're really proud of Arthritis Services. It's actually a grant-funded program to um, uh, study virtual activity with patients that are being treated for arthritis. And the results are very well documented, and we can kind of share um, some outcomes from that study as well. We've talked about Meals on Wheels. There are, you know, a number of AAAs around around the around the country that have made use of our platform. Notably, Atlantic County was one of the earlier AAAs that got on board with us. That was a CARES Act funded program. They're up to probably 100 or so seniors that are on the program right now and growing. A lot of family engagement, a lot of games. They've set up you know, local news channels um, and they're having tremendous success. Um, I'd like to brag a little bit on my home state of Georgia. Uh, we're doing a lot of work with county government here. Um, in fact, uh, you know, Cindy was very kind in the early days of their program uh, to kind of share their success with some folks at Cobb County Senior Services, and they have just blossomed uh, since then, Gwinnett County, uh, Clayton County, Henry County, uh, and several AAAs here in Georgia. So proud of my, uh, proud of my state here. Uh, and another area where we're having a lot of success is in the area of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, you know, because we designed this for simplicity, because you can build in reminders uh, and routines, we're finding that it has a lot of applicability with um, individuals with developmental disabilities. So uh, we're doing a lot with um, the ARC program on a national level. Some of you may, um, may be involved in that as well. Um, what I want to do is let me just take a moment. I'll do a time check. I said we were going to make time for Q&A. Let me share with you what it actually looks like from the senior's perspective. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring up my tablet. Let's see. I'm going to remote control here, and I'm going to actually show you the device. 
So this is the Claris tablet, and this one has not been personalized. It just has the, the Claris logo. Um, but, you know, when you look at this, you go, wait a minute, there's just two things here. There's just, you know, video calling and messaging. What about all those wonderful things that Cindy talked about? Well, I want to explain to you that that's what the portal allows you to do. So when I log in to the portal, I actually have three devices or three seniors that I'm working with. My mom, uh, Ms. Gerson is this demo tablet that I'm showing you right now. And then this is my father-in-law. Um, he's 89-year-old retired rancher out in Houston, Texas. And um, he's a guy that's really never used anything like this. And he takes his tablet everywhere he goes now. He's just done an amazing job with it. Um, my mom has some dementia um, and she has done really, really well with this. So on our dashboard, we, we post up metrics around wellness, compliance, and engagement. So for example, I know that my mom used her tablet two hours ago. I know that my father-in-law used his device uh, three hours ago. And I can easily just click in here and I can see exactly what um, he's done with his tablet today. So he went online uh, at 7.42 this morning. He went and played his solitaire game. He really enjoys that. Um, he used one of the resources and he checked his Gmail and so on and so forth. So for time's sake, I'm not gonna go through all of that, but I do wanna show you how easy it is to control the tablet. So if I go into Ms. Gerson and I open up the communication functions, let's say that we're gonna, um, we wanna enable some games on the tablet right now. We have Candy Crush, Word Stack, and Solitaire. You can add any game that you want from the Play Store by simply adding it here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the games on the tablet by just displaying it here. When I save that and I go back to the tablet, you can see we've added the games button. And there they are labeled. So I just touch it. If I wanna play solitaire, I simply touch that and it will launch the game. And now I can play solitaire. So it's really, really easy to go in and add additional buttons. Let me just add um, one or two more, just so you kind of get the idea. So if I wanted to schedule events, so at 1.30 today, there's gonna be a, bu a book club that's gonna pop up. We're actually using Zoom to do that inside of the system. Um, we support video in a number of different ways, but we have a lot of customers that just wanna embed Zoom into our platform. It's very easy to do that. So I'll add an events button and why don't we add a photo album? And we'll turn that on. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is what we call resources. And this is kind of where we get into the art of the imagination. What do we wanna give access to? So in our world, a resource can be another app that lives on the device. So we can map a button to that app. We can, um, uh, create, uh, we, we can have an image, we can put up a PDF, we can um, publish customized video content, or we can simply locate a website. So um, here's an example of a website for aging in place, as an example. Uh, here is a link that would take the um, the member to their own chart with their with their with their doctor to their electronic medical record where they could log in and read that. So there's a lot of things that we're able to do. Here's a YouTube link for a channel with um, meditation music. What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate that as well. So now if we go back and look at the tablet, you can see how things are beginning to expand. So if I go to my events, you can see. I have book club at 1.30. Now the tablet would wake up at 1.30 with a big green button that says book club start now, or I can click here on the video call if I wanted to get there early and it would launch me into a Zoom call. So it's just really, really easy. Um, you know, I, I don't think that the cryptic nature of these Zoom links and WebEx links and so forth really translate very well. So that's why we've kind of masked this and made it very, very simple. So if Ms. Gerson wants to place a video call, 
this, these are her contacts. That's who she can call. Okay, I am watching time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And I'm going to see if we have any questions. We have a lot of comments here. So let me go back up and see if we have any comments. Okay, so we have one question. We may have answered this, but how do you select participants for using Companion? What impact on staff will this have? So I think that's a really good question that Cindy can touch on is, you know, how much work did this create for her team? How easy was it to get up and running? Um, was, it, was it hard data that you have on benefits from using Companion and what data gets collected? I think much of that has been answered, but Cindy, can you comment? on just how much of a lift this was for your team? Uh, it's not a hard lift, but it was challenging to get everybody on board. One of the things that they believed in it, but not everybody wants to learn how to use dashboard. And as you saw, it's, it's not a very difficult dashboard to use. But I really wanted all the staff that were involved with participants to try it, to learn about it. As we add more folks, we've thought about adding a part-time position, somebody that's very personable, that likes to talk to people on the phone, that can get the handle of this and could do the updates probably in four hours a week. And then as we add on more people, it could go up with the more hours per week. But uh, that's probably the way that we'll move so that we know that one person has their hand, hands on everybody that's using the tablet. Uh, but at first we did want all of our staff. It's not a heavy lift. It's a matter of we get together, uh, put everything up on the big screen, move around in the dashboard, talk about how you change things, how you add buttons, as Jake said. So it, it's not a heavy lift once you decide to do it. Now we did work a lot in the front, on the front side, talking about what is the tablet good for? What is it not good for? For example, it is not a 911 tool. Now, there are ways to communicate that information if you're not feeling well to your caregiver or your contact, but it is not an emergency tool as it stands. Um, so we talked a lot about that. What could we use it for versus what is it not good for? And then we also talked a lot about who are the candidates? And you all have to decide that for yourselves in your own organization. Who is the best candidate? And who will want to help you out if you decide to run a pilot at first? That's good. Um, there's another question here. It's an IT related question about 4G and how much time did it take for your IT staff to work with Claris? Um, I certainly can answer that, or Cindy, <laughs> if you want to comment real quickly, and then I will. We don't, we don't have an IT staff. Um, we just have us, and there was, we just sat down and decided what kind of things we wanted to be on it, sent the message over to Claris, had it done, and as I said, we just had the tablets shipped directly to the individuals. Yeah. So there, we do have an IT volunteer if we have questions. Thus far, we haven't had to use them. Yeah, let me add to that. So um, the the Claris tablet is actually something that we um, have produced in collaboration with Samsung and Verizon. So these are very high quality, uh, very high quality devices. Um, we have a very strong 4G backbone to support um, the communications. Occasionally we'll get into areas where we know in advance that Verizon is not the best carrier. Yes, we can deploy on AT&T or T-Mobile if we have to. I don't think that um, Cindy, even though, um, well, Verizon is actually the strongest carrier in North Carolina. I, I almost had that backwards. Um, we could not deploy AT&T. So um, not bad mouth in AT&T. It's just not the strongest carrier in North Carolina. So sometimes we know these things in advance. Um, the point is this, we work to make this turnkey. Like we know that your organizations don't have a lot of IT resources. And the more that we put on you 
to activate tablets, put cases, protective cases on tablets, get rid of the little short cord that Samsung ships it with and you know put a longer cord in there. If we were relying on you guys to do these things, it just takes up too much time and resources. So we really have made it turnkey. Um, there's another question about 911, and let me just say in general that at this point in time, we really have not designed this to be a personal emergency response system. It's not on the telephone system, so there is no like phone dialer. You're not dialing people's phone numbers. You're able to send messaging, excuse me, messages from the tablet, and you can do video calling to specific people but it's not designed to call 911. What we have seen, and I know Cindy does this, is Cindy takes advantage of our check-in feature. So you can, des you can put a check-in button on the system. You can have it pop up at a certain time. So I do this with my mom. I'll, her check-in button just pops up at 11.30. I like for her to press it and just lets me know that she's, you know, that she's doing okay. And um, sometimes she does sleep in because she doesn't sleep well at night. So you know, I don't have her check in at nine o'clock. I, I used to do that, but I realized how her sleep patterns just weren't really supporting that. Um, so between a check in button and a call me button, you do have an alert system built in here. It's just not on the 911 platform. Any other good questions, guys? Any other questions or comments? Um, Jake, we have a question about insurance do we have insurance on these tablets and does clears collect the tablets after the patient disenrolls with our services for for us from meals on wheels we um own the tablets i mean once we purchase them we own them yeah. so it's a matter of continuing the service and the agreement that we have our pilot participants sign says that meals on wheels owns this device and if anything happens that it will be returned to Meals on Wheels. And if they want to continue after the one year pilot, we give them certain options. They can either pay for their service, they can uh, ask to be part of a future grant opportunity, things like that. So yeah. there are different ways to work that. The tablets are in a case that is like a kid's case. It, it, is, uh, it would be hard to break it, it's yeah. very durable. It's got rubber bumpers on it, and uh, screen so I don't really worry about worry yeah, about that because most insane. folks have it set up right beside their chair where they spend most of the day. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you guys can still see me, but this is the companion tablet, and it has rubberized edges. It's a very strong OtterBox-like case. It has a plexiglass cover. We even cover the the ports. Um, I wouldn't recommend scuba diving with it, but it's highly water resistant. The other thing is these tablets are all tracked on GPS. So I can go into the portal just like I showed you before, and there's an option I can touch a link and it will show me on a map where that device is located. There's not a lot of incentive for, you know, these things to leave the intended location. They don't typically walk away because there's not a lot of value to it because they're entirely locked down. Um, even though it's a you know phenomenal Samsung device with a full Android operating system with you know who knows what apps you could put on there, when it leaves our house, uh, our warehouse rather, it is it is locked down. Um, so on on price, so we we do have an option to build in um, kind of an insurance policy that would protect up to uh, ten percent um, replacement for lost and you know stuff that just disappears. Um, they are under uh, a one year warranty for you know by the manufacturer. So if something you know is not working properly, you know return it to us. We'll send you a replacement. We'll take care of that. We're not we're not concerned about that. Um, we really don't get a lot back that are broken. I can't remember in recent times getting anything back that's actually been broken. So uh, they do hold up really, really well. Um, as far as you know, pricing, I'll be very transparent. It's it's $2.99 um, to purchase the device, and the service uh, for Wi-Fi is $29. Uh, our service to include the Verizon 4G data plan is $49. Um, we offer this for enterprises on an annual basis. 
So we have really two sides of our of our company. We have our B2C where you can go on the Claris Companion website and order this for your loved one, you know, now and put your credit card on file and so on and so forth. And, you know, that's a monthly bill. But in our enterprise environment, when we work with organizations like Meals on Wheels and AAAs and so forth, they are uh, prepaying for a year's worth of service. There is some incentive um, to prepay for two years, but obviously that can get a little tricky in the grant funding world. Jake, we also have the question, do the participants have to pay anything for this program? For us at Meals on Wheels, we're currently in a 100% grant funded mode. So the participants do not have to pay anything. But as we move forward after the grant period, we will give them the opportunity to contribute toward the service of the tablet or for their families mm -hmm. to contribute to the service of the tablet. And we also, and they have the option to say, oh, I'd like to be grant funded for another year. That's where we are with it. It, it would be lovely if we could get a little skin in the game for folks to contribute even monthly, whether it only be $10 a month, um, to know that they, that they appreciate it and they respect the, the tablet and the value of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just add, Cindy, that I think um, how this is, you know, quote, marketed in the community is really important. I think the more you bring family members into the equation, the more opportunity that you might um, be able to get some self-pay self support for this product. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be key. Um, uh, other, otherwise, in terms of, um, you know, having members actually pay for the tablet, that usually comes up in conversation about what happens after grant money runs out. I don't know, Cindy, I, I mean, I have my own thoughts about, you know, what COVID has done to change our society and our outlook on how we're caring for this most vulnerable population. And um, I think we're very hopeful and optimistic that we're not gonna take these types of tools away from seniors and put them back in those ultra vulnerable positions. I agree, Jake, and I think that there will be more grant funding available. And when corporations come out from under COVID and out from under the initial, right now, many of them are focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, but when they get come around again and, and see the major population of seniors that we have, I think they will begin funding some of this. The, this is part of the social determinants of health that insurance companies are also focusing on. And I think if you're delivering meals as we are, or congregate meals, and you can add on this component that lessens social isolation, then you will have more chance of getting a reimbursement from uh, Medicare supplements, from Medicaid, it, it, on and on. It is just a, a huge upfit to your meals program, whatever it might be. So I think there is gonna be great support for tools like this down the road. I'll leave this contact information up for a few minutes. I really wanna thank you for giving us an hour of your time. Uh, great questions. And Cindy, we continue to learn a lot from you and really appreciate all your contributions. You've been a great ambassador for Claris and you've just done a wonderful job for your county. Thank you. And you know, I, I, I know everybody has time constraints, but if anybody wants to ask more questions or stay on, I did have uh, my console up and meant to show a little bit of that as I was speaking, but was also watching my time very closely. If you'd like to see any of that, you can just send us a note in the chat or hang on or ask more questions. Happy to answer them. I can't tell you how excited we are about this tool. Uh, we, even though we had wonderful volunteers making comfort calls, that could not continue to happen on a daily basis forever. Uh, although I have to tell you that our volunteers doing that made a huge difference in the lives of individuals. We had one individual who had not had the opportunity to commune in a year and her comfort caller uh, reached out to her parish priest and they took communion to her. And that happened because of comfort calls, not something we could have done with our Charlie tablets, 
but uh, we now can communicate that information to our Charlie tablets. I know there's some other customers that are on the call. I also would like to mention that we will be standing up a customer advisory group um, in, in the next probably 60 to 90 days because we really um, believe in this kind of collaboration and sharing of ideas. So look forward to, uh, to working with you in that context as well. Um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and ask, uh, whoop, is there, let's see, one more question. Is there something you prepare to offer nationwide? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So this is a platform that we offer across North America. Um, Claris is actually a Canadian-based company, even though the majority of our business is here in the U.S. Um, so in terms of the New England region, uh, you know, we have a lot of folks in that region that do use the platform. I spent last week in actually in New York. I know that's not New England, but um, we're definitely in that in that region, so I'm not sure if that answers your question. So feel free to type in a follow up, and I'll pause. I will say that there are certain pockets of North Carolina and the U.S. where you absolutely cannot get a signal. So if you can't get somebody internet and you cannot get them a cell signal, it is tough. We have had two of our Charlie's come back because we just could not get any connection. So I'm being very supportive in North Carolina of the outreach of broadband and internet accessibility across uh, North Carolina and particularly in areas of our county we just cannot reach. Some of you may be familiar with this little area called Gold Hill and it is on the edge of Rowan County and Stanley County. And there are lots of, that was where there were gold mines back in the day. So that's an area we just haven't been able to reach. And we've tried several different cellular providers. I don't know, they're just in a black hole. So you happen. have to be realistic. It, yeah. You can't just go everywhere. And I'm sure there are parts of the Northeast, whether it be the upper part of Maine or other areas, but we want to, um, we want to be realistic about that. Yep. So far, we've had great luck, except for Gold Hill. Yeah, this, I'm just reading some of the comments here. Mm -hmm. I receive any cell service. Yeah, it's just a it's a tough situation. Um, um, we are happy to run, you know, a test if somebody is concerned about a particular area. We're happy to test a device with you. Um, but if you know if you know that all three of the major carriers, um, AT and T, Sprint, T Mobile slash uh, or AT and T, Verizon, and T Mobile Sprint aren't able to connect, chances are it would be a frustrating program for you to uh, for you to stand up. Um, the best option if, there is to simply to try to get some internet accessibility through the home, through yeah. the TV provider, et cetera. And I'm thinking there there are going to be some grants out there that allow us to do that. So there is an FCC grant now yes. that's been made available for um, people that are in rural areas. So perhaps that's something that we can talk about offline and how we could work with you to get um, that internet service in the home and then run the tablet via Wi-Fi. So you know we're real like success driven and consultative in how we go about this. So uh, we're happy to work with you on that. There was an earlier comment about um, um, what we're going to be sending out after this. I just want to reinforce that we're going to be sending the slide deck. There will be a link to the video that um, uh, you'll have access to as well. Okay. Cindy, thank you so much. Enjoy doing this. Sure. And I wish everybody a great day and uh, look forward to working with you all. Thank you so much.